Gold and Copper. How do we play them these days? Joining me today is Adrian Day of Adrian Day Asset Management. Adrian, thank you so much for being with well, me. Well, thank you. Having a good show? Uh, yes, yes, it's good. So let's talk business now, uh, Adrian. Okay. Gold and Copper. What are, what are your thoughts on these two metals? Oh, gosh, that's a big question. Well, of course, both Gold and Copper led on the downside in April when we had the big decline. I think what's been very encouraging is the news and, you know, what's happened to both of those metals since. In the case of gold, we know it's had a strong rally. Uh, and more importantly, perhaps, we had the very strong physical demand around the world. I think that was really telling because it, what, what it tells us is that investors, are, people generally are really concerned about what they see as manipulation and weird carryings on. So they go to the physical, they get away from paper, they go to the physical. I wouldn't be surprised if gold retested its lows, okay. but I frankly don't think we're going to see significantly uh, lower prices. And the reason is really quite simple. You know, I ask myself, why was everybody buying gold for the last five years? Were they right about, about it or were they wrong? And if they were right, they were right because they, they were concerned about depreciating currencies, low, ultra low interest rates, etc. Nothing's changed. So let me ask you this, uh, Adrian. Last time we spoke was at the PDAC yeah. in Toronto back in March. Then we saw that major correction happen in gold. What was going on in your mind when that was happening? Did that scare you? <laughs> I was actually out of the country when it happened, mm -hmm. so I would have been scared otherwise. Although, frankly, I'd have been buying a lot of the junior stocks that just collapsed uh, in, in, in those days because they got down to ridiculous levels. Um, but again, you know, wh why are people buying gold and has anything changed? And the answer is nothing's changed except for price. You know, we've had over 500 interest rate cuts around the world in the last four years. And they're still cutting interest rates. Europe just cut their interest rates to half a percent, all-time record low. Korea just cut its interest rates. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And as for printing money, the Fed keeps talking about exiting, right. but we haven't seen any concrete action that they're likely to exit anytime soon. And then you look at Japan with a target to double the money supply in the next 18 months, double the money supply. You've got the new Bank of England uh, governor in England, um, uh, Mark, Mark Carney Mark. from Canada, who says that uh, more stimulus is needed. And this is in England, which has been one of the worst offenders. Switzerland just said they're not going to pull back. Um, you know, it just goes on and on and on. So I think the conditions are the same. It's just a lower price. So Adrian, on Tuesday, Dennis Gartman said this is the most bearish he's ever been on gold. What do you think of that sentiment? <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. Dennis, whom I respect, is a trader. He is a short-term trader. I have seen Dennis give watershed bearish sell signals one morning and two days later give a watershed bull market buy signal. That's not knocking Dennis, he's a trader. I'm not a trader. You know, I'm a long-term I'm a long-term value investor. And frankly, when it comes to gold, it's not even an investment. Gold is a way of holding wealth. Mm -hmm. So gold is a way of preserving your assets and your purchasing power um, against other things. You might hold buy a picture, you might buy this, but certainly I prefer gold over dollar bills. So during these dips that we saw in yeah. gold, Adrian, were you taking advantage of that in buying? Certainly, but you know, right now the stocks look much better buy, much better value to me than does bullion itself. Right. So we're buying a lot of the, a lot of the stocks, and particularly the juniors. Even though I've spoken to many people here who have told me, look, we can even go lower on the juniors. Look, you can always go lower. Um, I think the truth is we haven't had an ultimate capitulation yet, but there's nothing to say you have to have, if, if we're in the middle of a long bull market, which I believe we are, you can get big significant corrections in the middle of a bull market, but you don't have to have capitulation. There's nothing to say that. And if you look at stocks like, I mean, I, I don't know, Eurasian or Riverside or Miranda or, you know, there's a, a whole bunch of them that are selling at, you know, twice their cash level, but have bunches of properties with other people drilling on them. You know, I think they're just good value right now. And the one thing I would say, is this a bottom? I don't know. How do I know if it's a bottom? But I do think if you buy now, over the next few months, summer's normally weak, you buy now, the time to buy, as we know, is when things are cheap. And things are cheap right now. Right. Three years, three. if your horizon is three to five years, right. I don't think you should be too concerned about getting the absolute bottom. Well, you're probably one of the most optimistic people I've been speaking to lately, Adrian. Well, good. <laughs> it's contrarian. That makes me very happy. <laughs> thanks so much for your thoughts today. Okay, thank you, Daniel. And thanks for watching our coverage at the Metals and Minerals Conference here in New York. We'll have more for you on kitco.com. In the meantime, you can follow this conversation on Twitter at Daniela Camboni. Thanks for watching.